Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariungi and uh, we continue with our topic of discussion and we are discussing uh, sexual reproduction in animals. So having uh, discussed uh, fertilization, uh, the next uh, stage we are going to discuss implantation. <clears throat> so implantation is uh, what follows or what comes after fertilization because we say that uh, actually fertilization occurs within the oviduct and it leads to the formation of a zygote. Then the zygote starts moving towards the uterus where implantation will take place. And uh, we say that uh, as this zygote moves along the oviduct, it undergoes some series of mitotic divisions. It divides by mitosis, that's what it means. And uh, by the time it's getting to the uterus, it's no longer a single cell. It's no longer a single cell, but now it's a mass of cells. And that mass of cells is what we call a blastocyst. The mass of cells that get to the uterus is what we call a blastocyst. And then that blastocyst is the one that will be implanted into the uterine wall. So we can see that uh, implantation, uh, this is the attachment. of the blastocyst to the inner uterine wall. And that inner uterine wall is also what is called the endometrium. The inner uterine wall or the attachment uh, uh, into the endometrium. Now, uh, it's not always the case uh, that uh, the blastocyst is implanted within the uterus. Uh, something can happen and uh, uh, the blastocyst becomes implanted within the oviduct. So if that happens, that the blastocyst is uh, implanted within the oviduct, then we get what we call ectopic pregnancy. And ectopic pregnancy is very, very dangerous because if it is not corrected early enough, it can be fatal or it can cause death. So we can say that uh, occasionally, Uh, the blastocyst may become implanted may become implanted within the oviduct just a moment leading to ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy is where implantation occurs within the oviduct. So in this case, whereby the implantation occurs within the oviduct, we are saying that that condition is uh, very, very fatal and very dangerous unless it is corrected by use of uh, a surgical operation. So we are saying that uh, this 
is very dangerous and can be fatal. It's very dangerous and can be fatal unless corrected immediately through surgery. So we are going to have a diagram showing how implantation occurs So implantation occurs on the upper part of the uterus. So that is the implanted blastocyst. Implanted uh, a blastocyst. And uh, of course, after implantation, is to no longer call the blastocyst, but now it becomes the embryo, or we refer to it as uh, an embryo. So after implantation, it becomes the embryo. And uh, the embryo becomes differentiated to form three layers. And uh, these layers are the chorion which is the outermost layer. Then there is the amnion and allantois. So it is, becomes differentiated to form three layers. Now, the chorion, uh, this one has finger-like projections called chorionic villi that help attach into the endometrium into the inner uterine wall. So the chorion has the chorionic villi. And those chorionic villi, they are the ones that will later become the placenta. Then we have the amnion. Uh, this is a membrane that and closes a cavity or a space called amniotic cavity. It encloses a space that is referred to as amniotic uh, cavity. And in the, within that amniotic cavity, we have a fluid, within the amniotic cavity we have a fluid that is known as amniotic fluid. Uh, so amniotic cavity 
contains amniotic fluid that one or a supports the embryo also provides an aquatic environment to prevent desiccation or to prevent excessive loss of water and also acts as a shock absorber. It also acts as a shock absorber against mechanical injury. Against mechanical injury. So that is uh, the amnion. So the chorion finger-like projections for attaching. Uh, for attaching onto the uterine wall. And these are the ones that can be seen protruding from the blastocyst. Then the amnion is another membrane that forms and this membrane encloses a cavity that is known as amniotic cavity and within that cavity there is a fluid called amniotic fluid and the role of the amniotic fluid is to support the embryo if it is in the early stages of implantation or if it is in the later stages uh, it is the fetus. Uh, provides an aquatic environment, a watery environment to prevent desiccation, excessive water loss, and also acts as a shock absorber against mechanical injury. So we'll have a short exercise there. So in the assignment, the first question, what is implantation, as we have discussed it? And two, state the function of chorion and amnion. So those are the layers that are initially formed within the embryo after implantation. So we'll stop there until next time. Goodbye.